7.30, we call the meeting to order. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Twenty-two supervisors are present. Supervisor Rose is excused. Citizen comments. Any citizen wish to speak? Any citizen wish to speak? Any citizen wish to speak? Seeing none, citizen comments are closed. Okay, I just have a couple announcements. Is um, to all supervisors, including those who are returning to the board, no. are, are asked uh, to please leave their iPads on their desks tonight. IT will be collecting them and reconfiguring them with a new email domain. Returning supervisor will receive their iPads back and new supervisor will receive theirs at the county board meeting on Thursday night. It will be here for an hour prior to the Thursday night meeting to distribute the iPads and help uh, with any login issues. Also, all the outgoing supervisor tonight, at the end of the meeting, please return your keys, your key cards to Reggie. That's all I have right now. Supervisor reports. Any supervisors wish to speak? Supervisor Ned Weski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Last night I sat down at my desk thinking about what message I wanted to leave with the county board. I was searching in a drawer for a pen and I came upon a thank you card from the former county board supervisor for District 16, the late and much beloved Jerry Gully. The card reads, Amanda, thank you for taking the time to discuss the needs of our district and well, everything. Looking forward to further discussions, Jerry. While I was running for office, Jerry and I had exchanged a few emails and I asked if we could meet to discuss what he would consider the top concerns of the district and he graciously arranged a Zoom meeting. Thinking back to that conversation, I can't remember much detail, but I do remember Jerry's sincerity. He seemed to truly care about the community and he wanted to make a difference. I figured we had that in common, so the talk was already going very well. What stands out to me most about that conversation was Jerry's disappointment with the amount of division that he witnessed during his term on the board. He encouraged me to work with everyone and not just supervisors and constituents who shared my views, and I am proud of the effort I have made to do just that as a county board supervisor and will continue to do in my role at the state level after two years serving in this seat, despite many attempts at compromise, I am disheartened to share that I depart with a similar disappointment in my experience. The truth is, Mr. Chairman, all of us here have the most important thing in common. We all share a desire to help make Kenosha County even better. We certainly don't always agree, but we have had some significant bipartisan success. Everyone in this body has united with staff behind efforts to fight the opioid crisis. I'm very proud of this. After major fiscal losses during the pandemic, we all worked together to find ways to get Brookside back on track. Together, we made significant investments in public safety. We had bipartisan support for public works and capital improvement projects and bipartisan concerns and inquiries when costs were overrun. And even though we are in nonpartisan seats, we all know we have biases. 
With Supervisor Geertsen's unique, valuable knowledge and experience leading the way, we have joined together behind common sense improvements in fiscal policy and maintained our excellent credit rating. Probably most impressive though, Mr. Chairman, this county board has passed two annual budgets without increasing the tax levy in a time of record inflation. This in itself is quite remarkable. Working with the county executive, we found ways to keep Kenosha up and running without passing on exorbitant cost increases to the taxpayers. I'm very proud of this. It has been my honor and my pleasure to serve the people of District 16 for the past two years. In my dual role as a supervisor and state representative, I'm proud to have been able to advocate for Kenosha County and all of our municipalities in passing historic state legislation to fund local governments. The ongoing shared revenue coming to our communities as a result of 2023 Wisconsin Act 12 is a game changer, huge for Kenosha County. I'm proud to have been able to work on both sides of that bill. As a supervisor, I learned from District Attorney Mike Gravely about our criminal justice needs. I took that knowledge to Madison to advocate for pay increases for prosecutors and public defenders in the state budget. My request for two additional assistant DAs for Kenosha County was included in the state budget, which only allowed for a total of five across the state. Huge win for Kenosha County. As chair of the Human Services Committee, I learned about the county's need for an increase in child support funding. My budget motion for this at Madison, in Madison was included in the state's adopted budget bill last summer. My experience as a county board supervisor has truly informed my role in the legislature and vice versa. I will be forever grateful for this opportunity. In particular, I would like to take this opportunity to, take, to thank Supervisors Decker and Chairman Nudo for recruiting me to run for this office. Seems like so long ago, but maybe just yesterday. Thank you to Supervisors Juhas and Supervisor Gens for keeping me on my feet and I'm on my toes, and to Supervisor Geertsen for some excellent mentorship. Lastly, special thanks to County Executive Samantha Kirkman for always looking for a way to find consensus for the greater good of Kenosha County. Not long after I received this thank you note from Jerry Gully, he left the world too soon. If we all knew when God was going to take us, would we treat each other differently? Would we be more willing to listen would we be more willing to work together? Making progress and getting work done is more important than individual wins. Great leadership transcends personal conflict. Choose wisely. Congratulations to all incumbent and new supervisors. I hope the coming term brings great ideas, new innovations, and positive relationships on this board that prioritize representation of the people over political and personal agendas. I want everyone to know that my door is always open. You have my contact information. Let's move Kenosha County forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Supervisor Geschke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a brief uh, update from the Planning and Development and UW Extension Education Committee. Um, we have one land use item that's going to be coming before us later, so I won't speak on that now, but a uh, couple of uh, Extension Education updates. First of all, uh, Youth in Governance, uh, the current cohort is coming to an end, their term, and uh, as I mentioned, uh, we recently finished up um, interviews of some uh, sharp young people. Uh, we have 16 that are accepted into next year's program with one additional additional alternate and uh, they will be starting officially in one month and so it'll be the, the our second meeting in May uh, will be kind of the send-off of the current cohort and welcoming in the new uh, the new youth so mark your calendars uh, to be there for that also, uh, we are in uh, the month of April, which uh, is the Safe Kids, Strong Families Month. That's the theme for um, child, uh, child abuse awareness. And uh, we have quite a, quite a number of events uh, that have already happened and will be happening throughout the month. So I have a handout on your desk, a calendar here. Uh, make note of those dates if you're interested in attending or participating in any of those. 
Um, actually, the, uh, the last weekend of March uh, was the day that we put the blue pinwheels in over at the uh, job center corner there. Uh, County Executive Kirkman and I were there representing the county along with our uh, many dedicated staff members and guardians uh, of the children. And uh, so just trying to raise awareness uh, for how to have stronger families and safer kids and uh, take note of those events. Along those lines, there is a family fun run and walk at the end of the month. Uh, again, you have a handout on your desk uh, if you'd like to participate in that. Uh, that's been rotating different locations the last several years, and this year it's at uh, the Kenosha County Center out in Bristol at 45 and 50. So we have a beautiful walking path there and trails uh, beautifully landscaped by our UW Extension uh, Horticulture Department and others. And so um, take note of that. And then also after that event, there will be a, uh, a special fair it's the family's branching out uh, handout. And so uh, there'll be all different uh, vendors there. Again, um, it'll be family fun, but also helping uh, people be aware of what resources are available um, to uh, encourage stronger families and safer children in our community. Um, one final update uh, from the um, Positive Youth Coordinator, the, the YAR, that's Youth as Resources Board, uh, interviews will be on, um, uh, they, were, they were held uh, earlier this week. And uh, so there were 16 interviews for three openings on that board. And uh, so we'll look forward to hearing um, which new participants will be on the Youth as Resources Board uh, in the coming months. Uh, the, we did get a uh, annual report from the UW Extension Director Larson, and uh, I have asked her to reach out to the new chair, whoever that will be, in the coming weeks to uh, possibly uh, maybe take a few minutes and talk through this report with us as a board just to share all of the exciting things that uh, UW Extension is doing right here uh, in our backyard. All right, thank you, Mr. Chair. That concludes my report. Thank you. Supervisor Uwas. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Tonight I'd like to take a brief moment to acknowledge Supervisor Kubicki's retirement from Kenosha County Government. Supervisor Kubicki has been an integral part of our county's leadership since 2006, dedicating himself to serving our community. Throughout his tenure, Supervisor Kubicki has held several key roles, including Chairman of the Human Services Committee and Legislative Committees, as well as County Board Chairman from 2014 to 2016. His leadership has been marked by a steadfast commitment to addressing the needs of our community and guiding the board's decision-making process. One of Supervisor Kubicki's significant achievements was his pivotal role in steering the approval of a $20 million expansion and renovation project for Brookside Care Center. This nationally recognized facility renowned for its excellent in nursing home and skilled care, received crucial support under Supervisor Kubicki's guidance. Supervisor Kubicki's track record exemplifies a deep-seated commitment to serving his community and driving positive change. His dedication and contributions have left a lasting impact on Kenosha County residents, and he will be sincerely missed. So I'd like to congratulate Supervisor Kubicki on his 18 years of service. Thank you. Any other supervisor comments? Supervisor U.S. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just one more indulgence, please. Over the past 26 years, Supervisor O'Day has been a dedicated public servant to the Kenosha County Board of Supervisors. Throughout his tenure, Supervisor O'Day has shown a commitment and leadership to this board and to the county board. He has served as both a chair and vice chair and beyond his governmental roles, Supervisor O'Day continues to make significant contributions to the community. He currently holds the position of president on the Kenosha History Center Board of Directors, demonstrating his passion for preserving and celebrating the rich history of our region. Additionally, Supervisor O'Day generously volunteers his time and expertise to various nonprofit activities, furthering the mission of organizations dedicated to serving the community. And for those of us that served with 
Supervisor O'Day, when he was chair, he donated $200 in honor of every supervisor to a charity that they chose. And I believe that's the first time that's ever been done by a chairman, just showing his commitment to the nonprofits throughout Kenosha County. Supervisor O'Day's involvement extends to key institutions such as the Brookside Care Center Board of Trustees and served on the Board of Health, where his leadership and dedication have made a positive impact on the well-being of our residents. John O'Day's decades of service and unwavering commitment to Kenosha County are a testament to his character and dedication to improving the lives of others. I wish you well on your well-deserved retirement, John. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Supervisor U.S., but I want to make a correction on that. I believe it's 28 years. Congratulations, John. Any other supervisors wish uh, to speak? Any other supervisor wish to speak? Any other supervisor wish to speak? Seeing none, supervisor comments are done. Old Business Ordinance 13 from the Legislative Committee, an ordinance for the amendment of the Municipal Code, Kenosha County Chapter 2, County Board Rules of Procedure. This passed unanimously at committee. Uh, Supervisor Thomas. Uh, motion to approve. Um, of legislative? Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Moved by Supervisor Thomas, second by Supervisor Gens. Supervisor Thomas. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this was discussed over several meetings, and um, Attorney Cardamone and uh, Andy is here somewhere as well that they spent, I'm not sure how many hours collectively looking at this and reviewing this, and we made adjustments in the legislative committee meeting over two sessions, and um, was talked through extensively and it, there was some language that was changed during that time which we all agreed upon as well um, and I, with that consensus I, I don't have any more to say if there's questions during the time for either of the attorneys here that would be fine thank you any other supervisor comments any other supervisor comments supervisor stock Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, just in reviewing the ordinance change, there's one item I wanted to bring to everyone's attention. It's on page 21 of 26. It is underneath committee operations, and it's subheading uh, H. It's actually nestled inside of G. <clears throat> this was a change that was introduced, but it wasn't discussed during legislative committee. And I would like to make a motion uh, to amend uh, this code to strike out subsection H. It basically does not allow supervisors that are county board members but not members of the committee. It does not allow them to participate in the discussion, which is a practice that um, we have been able to do. Um, I believe it was an oversight in how it was included, and I would make a motion to amend, uh, to strike uh, subsection H from the, the ordinance change. Okay, just strike the old thing there. Correct. Okay, is there a second? Second, second by Supervisor U.S. Any supervisor comments? Any supervisor comments? Any supervisor comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. On the original motion with the uh, amendment, uh, any discussion on that? Anyone, any discussion on that? Any supervisor? Seeing none, we're going to have a roll call and this will take 16 votes. Okay, that's what So the, the ordinance fails.
It needs 16. Yeah, it wasn't going too hard. Hmm? Oh, is it? It wasn't. Is it 16? It's still only 14, but it Right. So it fails. If we needed 16 votes. Yeah, and we don't have 16? Mm -mm. Okay. So, I guess, uh, okay, okay, the next so, one. New business resolution 125 from the executive committee, a resolution recognizing May 5th through the 11th, 2024 is public service recognition week. This passed unanimously at committee, supervisors Carroll and Thomas were excused. Vice Chair Decker. Move the resolution, please. Moved by Vice Chair Decker, second by Supervisor Nordigan. Uh, Supervisor Decker. Uh, this resolution is to recognize May 5th through the 11th, 2024 as Public Service Recognition Week. Um, we have many excellent public serv servants in the community, especially in uh, Kenosha County, working for the county. And uh, I believe it's fitting to recognize Public Service Recognition Week, which is May 5th through the 11th, 2024. Okay. Any Supervisor comments? Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Does uh, anybody have any objection to have 126, 127, 128, 129, and 130 to vote at the same time after red? Any objections? No. Okay, so can you please uh, read all of them? Resolution 126 from the Executive Committee, a resolution recognizing May 15th, 2024 as Peace Officers Memorial Day and May 12th through the 18th, 2024 as National Police Week. This passed unanimously at committee. Supervisors Carol and Thomas excused. Resolution 127 from the Executive Committee, a resolution recognizing May 2024 as National Military Appreciation Month. This also passed unanimously. Resolution 128 from the Executive Committee, a resolution recognizing May 5th through the 11th, 2024 is National Correctional Officers and Employees Week. Resolution 129 from the Executive Committee, a resolution recognizing May 6th through the 12th, 2024 is National Skilled Nursing Care Week. Resolution 130 from the Executive Committee, a resolution recognizing May 2024 as National Foster Care Month. Vice Chair Decker. Move all those resolutions. Uh, resolutions 26, 126, 127, 128, 129, and 130. Moved by Supervisor Decker, second by Supervisor Stock, Supervisor Decker. We all read the resolutions, pretty basic. If you have any questions, please let me know. <laughs> any supervisor comments? Any supervisor comments? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Resolution 131 from the Public Works and Facilities and Finance and Administration Committees, a resolution to approve a land rental agreement with UW-Madison for the installation of a weather station. This passed unanimously at both committees. Supervisors Belsky, Carroll, Thomas, Rose, Grady, and Poole were excused. Uh, Supervisor Nordigan. Move the resolution. Moved by Supervisor Nordigan, second by Supervisor Gerson. Supervisor uh, Nordigan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as the uh, uh, resolution stated, Wisconsin, uh, University of Wisconsin wants to put a weather station out on the 45 and 50 property that Kenosha County owns and operates our facilities out there. This will be a, a wholly um, on its own station. Uh, it'll have its solar power to power it. We won't be, uh, we won't be uh, in charge of anything. We won't be, won't be any cost to us. And it's going to be the only weather station in south, southeastern Wisconsin, closest being in Whitewater. Um, so <clears throat> I ask for your support on approving this resolution. Okay. Any other supervisor wish to speak? Uh, Supervisor Gerson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Supervisor Nordigan covered the report, so no further comment. Okay. Any other supervisor wish to speak? 
Any other supervisor wish to speak? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, opposed? Passes. Resolution 132 from the Public Works and Facilities and Finance and Administration Committees, a resolution to approve a jurisdictional transfer agreement of part of County Trunk Highway N to the City of Kenosha. This passed unanimously at both committees. Supervisors Belsky, Carroll, Thomas, Rose, Grady, and Poole were excused. Okay, uh, Supervisor Nordigan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Move the resolution. Moved by Supervisor Nordigan, second by Supervisor Gerson, Supervisor uh, Nordigan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is uh, a part of a highway where um, Uline will be, I guess, putting their third or fourth headquarters, I forget which one. And this kind of cleans it up for them that everything's in the same jurisdiction uh, by transferring this uh, section of, of county and to the city of Kenosha. Thank you. Thank you. Any supervisor, Supervisor Gerson? Okay. Any other supervisors? Any other supervisor wish to speak? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Resolution 133 from the Finance and Administration Committee, a resolution 2023-2024 carry over an annual closeout. This passed unanimously at committees. At committee, Supervisor Rose, Grady, Poole were excused. Okay, moved by uh, Supervisor Gerst. Uh, move approval. Moved by Supervisor Gerson, second by Supervisor Frangel. Supervisor Gerston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, as I go through this report tonight, you'll see, uh, you'll hear me say the word exceptional quite often. And if you want to follow through, I'm going to put on my old uh, CFO finance director hat. And uh, if you look at page six, uh, page six is a good summary of the status of the general fund. And you can see that we're adding just a little under a million dollars to that balance from 2022, so we did well. Uh, a couple things I'll highlight: uh, the Kenosha, uh, the uh, CCS revenue from human services had a surplus of 4.6 million. Uh, this is uh, uh, this occurred because the state lifted a cap. Uh, that, that was not something that we could anticipate, but they lifted a cap, so we got 4.6 million of additional revenue from what we normally would have gotten. And the second thing I'll call out on the surplus side on the page six uh, report uh, is that we had a surplus in interest earnings. We really have an excellent uh, investment program and uh, it, with interest rates uh, climbing, we were able to use that to balance the budget. On the negative side, we had uh, a deficit in uh, the sheriff personnel budgets, uh, which uh, was more than offset with our surpluses. Uh, but the uh, finance team advised that they did correct this uh, circumstance in the 2024 budget, so we shouldn't see that kind of a deficit from overtime and uh, uh, personnel costs and sheriff going forward in 2024. One significant thing we'll be acting on is uh, because we did so well, uh, we really would have closed out with a, a surplus of over $3 million, but we're, uh, if you look at this page six, we're rolling 2.2 million of surplus that otherwise would have lapsed to the general fund to help fund the uh, human services building. So uh, if you recall, we got a report and we approved bonding for the human services building that cost had, had escalated. So this does help put a dent from the, that inherited uh, fiscal uh, uh, challenge that we have. Uh, and one other thing that helped us do that, which uh, I uh, heard it mentioned in some of the reports tonight, is Brookside, when we, uh, when I came on board here, I saw we had a three and a half million dollar uh, deficit in Brookside, and we're gonna close at close to break even at the end of 2023. So far through 2024, it's actually been in the black. So we did have some ARPA funds set aside for that. Uh, to balance 2023, which we do not need because of the successful uh, 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 
work that the team did to get that uh, operation back into balance and we were able to use that to help us uh, balance uh, the deficits that we had. Uh, if you look at page eight, those are amounts that are appropriated, that were appropriated, approved for spending in 2023 carried over to 2024 to complete the anticipated spending. So we already had approved that. We already had a funded, we already had funded it. Uh, a couple, most of the uh, projects are status quo. They're moving from 2023 to 2024 just to complete the project that was approved. There were a couple minor uh, uh, reprogrammings of dollars, probably one of the, uh, most interesting and uh, material ones is because of the uh, influx of new county board supervisors, we did uh, move some money uh, from the county executive's office to the county board budget uh, to help with some additional training uh, for the new incoming county board supervisors. So that is one change. We will be acting on that uh, as a budget amendment in, uh, uh, when we uh, act on this policy. Uh, page nine moves 1.9 million of ARPA funds to cover deficits in lieu of using money from the general fund, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, and um, that is that budget tra uh, transfer is shown on page nine. Page 10, another thing we're acting on. We are not adding a new position. What we're doing is we're pushing $100,000 from uh, contracted costs to uh, personnel cost and we're moving what had been contracted to uh, to create a new position. So it's a break even from a financial standpoint, but we're moving from contracting to uh, uh, to creating a position for a human services quality analyst. Uh, page 15 reclasses the position in land information from an NE9 to an NE11. This is an upgrade in the position. Uh, the, so that really uh, completes the highlights of my report other than to say that this was an exceptional uh, year financially for our AAA rated county. Uh, due to the sound budget that this board adopted, uh, we closed at what was over a $3 million surplus. I do agree with the wisdom of moving $2 million to help fund that human services project. So I really think that's an excellent plan. Uh, I really have to tip my cap to the leadership here because we're through a third of the way through this year already. This board really adopted two good budget plans. So I, I wanna compliment our chairman, Gabe Noodle, who led the county board through this, uh, the finance committee chair, um, Terry Rose, uh, everybody on the county board that adopted the, our budget plans. In particular, I really need to uh, compliment uh, the county executive for putting such a good uh, financial plan together along with uh, her team with uh, Patty Merrill and Barna Bench, the uh, budget director. And uh, with that, I conclude the highlights of my summary. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, other than I recommend approval of the resolution. Thank you. Supervisor Belsky. I just want to um, commend uh, Finance Director uh, Patricia Merrill and uh, Barna Banks for uh, a fantastic job of keeping a close eye on the money and uh, for constantly reporting to us and uh, looking out for the county's best interest. Their team did a phenomenal job, so thank you. Thank you. Any other supervisor wish to speak? Any other supervisor wish to speak? Seeing none, uh, this one takes a 16 votes, so we'll have a roll call. Resolution 133 passes unanimously. Ordinance, first reading to required, Ordinance 14 from the Legislative Committee and Ordinance to amend Municipal Code of Kenosha County Chapters 19 and 20, Kenosha County Ethics Policy. Uh, Supervisor Thomas. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules. Okay, is that a second? A motion to suspend the rules. And do what? Oh, to only have one hearing or only one reading of the ordinance. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. 
Was there a second? Second. Second by Supervisor Gans. Uh, this is the better one, right, uh, Joe? To suspend the rules? I believe it is, but let's make sure. It is not debatable. Okay, this is not debatable. So, all in favor to suspend the rules, I believe we need two thirds. And uh, roll call was asked. Yes, if you want to suspend the rules, no. If, uh, if you don't. <laughs> Fails. Ordinance 15 from the Planning, Development, and Extension Education Committee, an ordinance regarding Gerald A. and Linda M. Helmert, joint revocable trust owner requesting a rezoning from A1 Agricultural Preservation District and C2 Upland Resource Conservancy District to A1 Agricultural Preservation District a2 General Agricultural District, C2 Upland Resource Conservancy District, and C1 Lowland Resource Conservancy District in the town of Brighton. This passed unanimously at committee. Supervisor Carroll was excused. Supervisor Geschke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move Ordinance 15. Moved by Supervisor Geschke, second by Supervisor Beshaw. Supervisor Geschke. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this ordinance rezone did pass our committee unanimously. Um, I would invite my colleague, Supervisor Bashaw, to speak on behalf of this uh, ordinance rezone. Uh, he's familiar with this property uh, being uh, in proximity to his neighborhood. Supervisor Bashaw. Thank you, Supervisor Gashke. I very much appreciate this opportunity as my last official act. Uh, Jerry and Linda. Helmert are long-term and very well-respected members of our community. In fact, anyone who has voted in Brighton has had the opportunity to speak with Linda as they've gone through the voter line. So I very, very much appreciate the opportunity to support them as they wish to um, move out of their farm home, which is beautiful, very elegant, and build their retirement home just down the road. So I ask that you approve this uh, motion and move this forward. Thank you. Any supervisor wish to speak? Any supervisor wish to speak? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Passes. Claims 21, Mike Seitz, property damage. Uh, refer to Corporation Council. The approval of the April 3rd, 2024 minutes by Supervisor Wambolt. Supervisor Wambolt. I move the minutes of the April 3rd County Board meeting. Second. Moved by Supervisor Wembold, second by Supervisor Net uh, Rodriguez. Uh, any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Okay, before we adjourn, I think we have one more thing that uh, I would like to do it. So please hang in there for a few extra minutes and uh, we'll get it done. Thank you. It's on automatically. Okay, at this time, I just want to take a few minutes so we can recognize all the supervisors that are, not, that are going to be out. So Reggie is going to call them. Please come on over and uh, we'll go. Yeah. Supervisor Brian Bashaw. And congratulations on your two years of service for Kenosha County.
few words. Take your back from Thank you, Reggie. Thank you, Brian. Thank you for your service. First of all, thank you all. Thank you, this board. I learned a lot working with you. Had some fun, had some difficulties, but we had some fun. We did a lot of great things for this county. Um, I want to leave you with something that's been going through my mind. We get elected, we run partisan, right? Even though it's a nonpartisan position. We get elected by the people that we represent in our district. Number one, first and foremost. Our responsibility is to each and every one of them. Every one of them. Not just those on each side of the aisle or those who didn't vote. We turned out almost two, uh, a little over 2,000 votes in District 19 this election out of 7,500 people. That means there's still a lot of people that didn't vote, but their voice is also represented by us every time we walk in here. Every time we leave our partisan flag outside and come in and represent our district and represent Kenosha County. Malcolm Gladwell is probably my favorite author. I don't know if you've ever read any from Malcolm. Outliers is the book that's in my mind right now. Outliers teaches people to challenge, right? Challenge authority, to question it, not to simply accept and follow along. I'm not a follower longer. I tend to challenge authority and ask the questions. If there's a question to ask, ask it. You represent the people of your district. None of us represents group speak. None of us represents a party when we show up here. We all represent our district. So challenge authority. Follow Malcolm Gladwell and step out of your comfort zone and ask the questions that are hard to ask and do the things that are hard to do. So thank you all. Thank you to District 19. And I look for a great future for Kenosha County. So congratulations all. Thank you. Supervisor Amanda Nedweski, and thank you for your two, two years of service to Kenosha County. Everybody already heard my speech, but I, I would like to concur with Supervisor Bashaw. Thank you for those, those words of wisdom. Thank you. Supervisor Zach Stock, thanking you for your two years of service to Kenosha County. Well, yeah, I was told there was going to be a speech. Well, you know. Thank you very much. It has been a pleasure serving uh, District 11, the neighborhood that I grew up in. I am just honored to, just to have this opportunity to serve my district for the past two years. Um, I trust my successor and my neighbor is going to do a very good job as well. And I just look forward to uh, the future of Kenosha County. And I just want to thank everyone, the, uh, the supervisors that helped bring me up to speed to things, the county staff that I got to meet over the years. It's been an awesome experience. And who knows, maybe I'll be back in a couple more years. Thank you. Thank you. Supervisor Zach Rodriguez for six years of service to Kenosha County. I see that you brought your book. I did, I all. did. Just uh, I reached out to Chairman Noodle last week and I said, hey, I'd like to leave some uh, closing remarks for my time on the board. He said, well, just slow down. I think I got something planned. So, so thank you, Chairman Noodle. Uh, I'm going to start by reading a passage uh, that I came across in this past year. You only get to be in your 20s one time and then it's over. You get to learn these lessons and meet these people and experience these struggles one time. And sure, some of them will repeat themselves again and again, lots of one last times that are not actually the last time. You only get your own first apartment, one bout of that very unique kind of loneliness, one chance to raise your bar because it doesn't go back down. One heartbreak that feels like that, 
because time has a way of making you feel things in a more grown-up way. It just doesn't hurt as deeply when you're older, does it? Even the way you experience sadness is beautiful in your 20s. It's a hard time when there's so much yet to be learned, so many people you have yet to meet, uh, when your heart has so much capacity. Something about being in your 20s is different than when you're not. You notice what things like the way the air smells before it's about to rain in the summer because it brings out a kind of unhappiness that you don't feel anymore. Not that you're necessarily happier now, you're just more grown up. Your emotions aren't quite as consequential. You only get to be in your 20s once and it breaks my heart to realize that because what a charming time it is. To have nothing figured out and still feel like you have everything in the palm of your hand. To think back and miss a seemingly unending struggle because it was just so much fun. Nonchalant and exciting, I can only assume that in 10 years time, I'll have these big sentimental fiery feelings about being in my 30s that one and only time I ever got to be. It's a short passage I came across uh, by an author I've come to quite admire. I decided to run for the county board when I was 19, after my first year of college. After being sworn in for the first time, the then county clerk, who I see is here with us tonight, came to me after being sworn in and she told me, to her knowledge, I was the youngest county board supervisor in the state of Wisconsin at the time. And to her knowledge as well, the youngest ever elected to this board here in Kenosha County. Over the last six years, I've learned more than I ever thought, talked with thousands of county residents in and outside of my district. I passed my first law, sat at the same table as the President of the United States, accepted three invitations to the White House to represent our county, rode on all three shifts with the amazing men and women of the Sheriff's Department, joined our amazing DPW folks as they cleared our roads after winter storms. I introduced and passed meaningful changes to county ordinances, policies, and budgets. And as news to nobody in this room, I got in very, very spirited and passionate debates with many, probably all of you. Supervisor Belsky will attest to that. And even after these debates, and regardless of, the, regardless of policy differences, we can still be courteous and professional with each other. And in our case, Supervisor Belsky, what I have, would consider very close friends. Four years ago, I stood in front of this board and told you about my grandfather who came to this country as a political refugee from Cuba. He came with quite literally nothing. My father, or his father, my great-grandfather, had been murdered by the Castro regime for challenging and defecting from the ideals of communism. My grandfather came here believing in new beginnings, free beginnings. He came here and enlisted in the U.S. Army at the height of the Vietnam War. He often told my siblings and I this was because if he couldn't stop communism in his own country, he'd do everything he could to stop its horrors in another country. He went on to have only one child, my mother, who as a survivor of extreme domestic abuse and the, was nonetheless the strongest woman I know. She went on to put herself through school, raise my siblings and I, start her own business on her own as a single mother. Statistics will tell you, like they told me and my siblings, that the world or the system was stacked against me. I will tell you it's not the case. Because in the country that my grandfather fled to, in this country, anything is possible. A 19-year-old college kid can run for public office and can win. It didn't matter that I was a minority. It didn't matter that I grew up in a low-income home. It didn't matter that a single mother raised me. What mattered was the driving commitment to be where you desired to be. Now at 26, I'm leaving office proud of what I've accomplished, proud of what we, this body, have accomplished. And while, yes, I'm sad to be leaving this room and so many colleagues I've grown quite fond of over the last six years, I'm excited for what's next. Excited to continue growing my small business I started during the pandemic. Excited to continue my career as the Wisconsin Security Director for a Fortune 500 company right here in Kenosha County. Excited to have more free travel time for what's become my home away from home in Texas. Excited to continue my journey towards a better health. To each of you in this room, thank you. To my constituents who placed their trust and voice in me for the last six years, thank you. To the incredible county staff, thank you. What we do in these chambers does not matter without the hard work and dedication the county staff shows each and every day. To Vice Chair Decker, thank you for believing in the 19-year-old version of myself and encouraging me to run for county board. To Chairman Nudo, thank you for taking me under your wing and being my mentor every step of the way. I only get to be in my 20s once, and I'm almost done, and so far I wouldn't have changed a thing. So Mr. Chairman, Chairman Noodle, thank you again. To my colleagues, thank you. And to the incoming supervisors, congratulations.
Supervisor Jeff Wamble, her eight years of service to Kenosha County as a county board supervisor. Oh, well, that's City of Kenosha, the other one. Okay. <laughs> I get one more. City of Kenosha. What, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. <laughs> well, that was a tough, that's going to be a tough act to follow. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Chairman Noodle. Uh, it was with mixed emotions that I decided not to run for re-election this year, but after eight years of service to Kenosha County, it's time for me to move on and begin the next chapter of my life. I'm very excited to be a grandfather and to travel and to continue working with the Life Initiative Organization to help fight against human trafficking. As I reflect on my time serving as County Board Supervisor, first for the 17th and then the 18th District, I'm filled with gratitude for the opportunities I've had to make a positive impact on our community. I'm especially grateful for the relationships I've built with my fellow board members and county staff, your dedication and your passion and your commitment to serving our county have been truly inspiring. And I'm thankful for the support and friendship we have, we have shared over the years. While I'm lo looking forward to this new chapter in my life, I'm confident that our county is in very capable hands. And I look forward to watching as it continues to thrive and to grow into the, in the years to come. But more than anything else, I must thank God for all the blessings he has bestowed upon me I must thank my family for their patience and understanding, especially my wonderful wife, Debbie, who is really going to miss the Culver's custard I would bring home after every meeting. But, but I must give a special thank you to all the citizens who thought me worthy of their vote. It is truly humbling, and I pray that I was worthy of your trust. It was an honor to serve you. Thank you. Supervisor Ed Kabicki of 18 years of service to Kenosha County. Uh, thank you, everyone. <clears throat> I always get uh, emotional when. Uh, I'm dealing with something I really love doing for the past uh, 18 years, and it's been an honor and privilege to work with the supervisors in this room here, present, and in the past during the 18 years. Um, also to all the uh, county staff and the county executives that I worked with over these past 18 years, truly an honor. I've met a lot of good people that work for this county to make this county keep moving forward, and I appreciate that to my wife and family for their unwavering support. Thank you. Um, also, too, uh, I'd just like to thank the people of District 6 who had the confidence to uh, vote for me and to keep electing me in the position for the past 18 years. I appreciate all that. Um, it's, it's the, like I say, the, the next chapter is coming. Um, I'm not going to say goodbye. I'm going to say I'll see you later. Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Thank you. <laughs> Supervisor John O'Day with 20 year, 28 years of service to Kenosha County. Is it chocolate? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My wife says I talk too much, so I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to talk a lot. But I, I started this journey 28 years ago and thought I would keep going. But uh, last June I had an experience with my brother-in-law passing away, and I called a friend of mine who 10 years ago was going to run against me, but he said, "No, I'm not going to. When you're ready to quit." call me. I did call him in June. 
I gave him till June to November to decide if he's going to run. And he decided to run. So you, now you have John Morrissey taking my place, and I'm happy to have him take my place. I've enjoyed all this time here, and any new supervisors, I just want to tell you, trust in the employees of the Kenosha County people. They are the best people that could be hired for any county in, in the state of Wisconsin, maybe in the United States. <laughs> when you have an issue that comes before the board and you're not sure about it, you can talk to anybody in the county, anybody that works in the county that's involved in that issue, and they'll tell you the truth about it. You can talk to them, and they'll talk to you. So don't be afraid. Also, you're going to get assigned to a committee. You may like it, you may not like it, but you're welcome to go to any other committee meeting and put your two cents in. And you should do that. You should learn about what's going on before it gets to the county board because that's where the work gets done. And 90% of the stuff goes before the, after the committee, it goes to the finance committee. So once you get done with that, you can always go back to the finance committee also. And you can have your two cents there too. Just follow it. Get your homework done before you come to the meetings so you know how you're going to vote. And this is a nonpartisan thing. And try to keep it that way. You'd want to do the best for Kenosha County because Kenosha County employees are doing the best for you. So we all have to work together. And I thank every one of them that work here. And I thank everybody who voted for me in my District 9 and District 14. And I thank the Kenosha News for a beautiful article that Terry Flores wrote for me the other day. I appreciate it very, very much. And I'm going on to my next adventure. Uh, and not have to come to any more meetings, but I'll be watching you. I'll be watching everybody here. I'll be watching it on TV. I'll be watching you. And if I have a question, I'm going to call you. Okay? Thank you. Okay, with that, I guess. Uh, uh, Gabe, can I just do one thing? Um, I would just like to recognize Supervisor Terry Rose, even though he is not here tonight. Um, Terry has served Kenosha County for 38 years. And in, in my experience of being working in the county clerk's office and attending these meetings, Terry has very rarely misses any meetings and it's actually I'm sure he has set a record just like he did at um, the what's the fitness place downtown I don't know the the one anytime fitness I when I was going there there was a, an award on the wall he attended more than 365 times in one year so um, he's a very impressive man and has done a lot of great work for Kenosha County and I would just like to recognize him even though he is not here tonight. Thank you, Reggie. And with that, I guess uh, I want to say goodbye to the people that are leaving. Uh, I disagree with John when he says he's not going to come here anymore because we'd like to see you. Okay, uh, there is uh, two seats uh, that unfortunately tonight are not going to be seated and uh, it's still going on, so we'll get to that uh, at a later date. But thank you, everybody.
Motion to adjourn Sendai. Hold on a second. Let me <laughs> let me sit down. Okay. Motion, uh, motion to adjourn by Supervisor O'Day, second by Supervisor Kubike. Sendai. <laughs> Sendai. Sorry. I, no, that's fine. I, I, I took it twice. The, you know. It's fine. Listen. Except you need a vote.
what are they doing? We have. We are going to call the new supervisors to come. Sit. The new supervisors can come and take your seats, please. And you'll be sitting in the seats of your previous of the same district. I showed them all. Okay. Do we have everybody or uh, we're missing anybody? Okay, it's, what time is it? Eight, 8.47, we'll call the meeting to order. Okay. Roll call first or seated? Yeah, roll call. Okay, let's have a roll call of the supervisor present, please. And uh, uh, they, don't have set, so they don't have anything set. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, we're missing, who are we missing there? Uh, number one, we're missing one more. There are 21 oh. supervisors present. Okay, we're gonna take the out of office, uh, Reggie. Oh, I'm, on the, I'm sorry, I'm on the wrong one. <laughs> I will read it and in the spot where your name is listed and your district you will read that um, but I'll have you read along with me if you could all stand and raise your right hand please I having been duly elected to the office of County Board Supervisor District but have not yet entered upon the duties thereof, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of Wisconsin and will faithfully discharge the duties of the said office to the best of my ability. Congratulations. If, can you please, please sign the line below that and um, return these to me so that I can file them. I'd also like to state there's a certificate of election on your desk and that is for you that you may frame or do whatever you like with it. <laughs> okay. She's passing up. 
Okay, she is passing out uh, some little piece of papers, and we're going to have a nomination of uh, their chairs, chairperson. Okay, uh, Supervisor Belsky. Uh, Chairman Nudo, I would like to make a motion to nominate Supervisor Monica Yuhas to the role of Kenosha County Board Chairwoman. I have had the privilege of knowing Supervisor Yuhas for several years, and I can confidently say that she is a dedicated and passionate individual who always puts the needs of people first. With her strong leadership skills, experience, and dedication, Supervisor Yuhas has proven herself to be the right choice for the role of County Board Chairwoman. First and foremost, Supervisor Yuhas has considerable experience in both the public and private sectors. Serving as a supervisor for several years, she's been an integral part of decision-making processes and has a deep understanding of the county's issues and concerns. She also has a strong commitment to community service and has been actively involved in various charitable and volunteer activities. This displays her compassion, empathy, and dedication towards serving the people, qualities that are vital for a county board chairwoman. Supervisor Yuhas has a proven track record of bringing positive change to the county through her leadership. Excuse me. Her leadership style is one that is inclusive and collaborative, seeking input from various stakeholders before making decisions. This approach has not only resulted in effective solutions, but has also fostered a sense of unity and cooperation within the county. Super U Supervisor Yuhas is a person of integrity and has consistently demonstrated a strong work ethic. In her role as supervisor, she has upheld high ethical standards and has been transparent in all her dealings. This instills, instills trust and confidence in the people, knowing that their county board chairwoman will always act in their best interest. One of the biggest challenges facing our county is the lack of unity within the county board. Supervisor Yuhas continues to work hard to bring people together and find common ground. I truly believe that she will work tirelessly to bridge the gap between board members and create a cohesive team that works toward the betterment of our county. Furthermore, Supervisor Yuhas will hold each member of the county board accountable for their actions. She believes that transparency and accountability are crucial for good governance. As chairwoman, she will ensure that all decisions are made in the best interest of the people and that there is no room for personal gain or political favoritism. I understand that there may be individuals who have their own political aspirations and may be vying for this position. Right now, we need a leader that can unite us. I believe that Supervisor Yuhas is that leader. It's time for the, for the Kenosha County Board of Supervisors to come together and demonstrate to the residents of Kenosha County that we can put aside our differences and work together for the betterment of our community. I urge you to join me in nominating Supervisor Yuhas to the role of Kenosha County Board of Supervisors Chairwoman. Thank you. Thank you. Is there any other nominations? Which, by the way, second is not needed, correct, Joe? Okay. Supervisor Carroll. Yes, thank you, Chairman Nudo. Um, I want to nominate uh, uh, Supervisor David Geertsen uh, for the County Board Chairman. Um, I nominate uh, Supervisor Geertsen because he is a trusted board member with extensive knowledge of county government obtained through long-standing leadership positions in our community. Um, David is born, raised, and has worked in and served Kenosha County his entire life. He and his wife Sharon of 38 years have been residents of Summers for 36 years. Um, David is a stalwart citizen of Kenosha County intent on making decisions in the best interest of county residents. His extensive lists of positions and recognition demonstrate his passion for serving and leadership abilities. Starting out in grade school uh, at St. Joseph Catholic Church in Racine in 1969, through high school at Horlick High in Racine in 1973, through University of Wisconsin Parkside, where he had uh, obtained his Bachelor of Science in Accounting and Personnel in 1978 and is a certified public accountant in 1984. 
Supervisor Geertsen has a long work history, uh, starting with the state of Wisconsin as an auditor in 1978 and working his way up through the financial uh, sector in the Kenosha County, being the chief financial officer and the finance director from 1988 through 2018. Quite an outstanding uh, term there. He is also elected and appointed to several positions as a he's currently a county board supervisor elected to his second term he's on the Kenosha Community Foundation as the president and volunteered and or been a board member for 25 years Kenosha he's uh, a treasurer of the Kenosha Community Health Center since 23 he's been on the Shalom Center Advisory Audit Committee as a member for six years uh, he was a village of trust village trustee in the village of Summers from 2015 through 2020 He's been on the Board of Review for the Village of Summers, been on the Incorporation Committee to take him from a township into a village, and on the Kaaba Audit Committee. Other affiliations and awards that, uh, that, that demonstrate that Supervisor Gearston is, uh, is very competent in his abilities and a good leader. He's a member of the AICPA, WICPA, and Government Finance Officers Association. Kenosha County Sunrise Rotary Club is a past president, Kenosha Area Chamber of Commerce on the Board of Directors, Armitage Academy as a past treasurer, treasurer, Outstanding CPA and Government Award, and Community Service Award for CABA and the Chamber of Commerce. Two of David's most celebrated achievements are guiding Kenosha County to a AAA bond rating as the Chief Financial Officer and helping guide the Town of Summers through their incorporation into a village as a volunteer member of the committee to incorporate. Additionally, David prepared and presented plans and procedures to turn around the village's financial position from the lowest bond rating in the state to a bond rating of AA minus. David is a staunch, is staunch in dedication to serving the residents of Kenosha County and truly respects the tenants that the county government exists to provide the citizens of Kenosha County with the highest levels of service and accountability through establishing a sound and responsible budget to provide financial stability and support for functions of the county government as, that ev as evidenced by the AAA bond rating, setting good practices and procedures, developing strategic plans guiding future decision making, bringing accountability to establish policies and strategic plans, and working together for the betterment of our communities. David's qualities that make him the best choice for chairman include dedication to counties guiding principles. He's a strategic thinker. He's a strong financial background. He's got a collaborative spirit. He's got, got the perspective developed from decades of community service and a commitment to implementing sound policies. I've come to know David as a very strategic thinker and his commitment to running for board chairman comes with the support of his family and the dedication of the time and energy required for this leadership position. Please join me in supporting Supervisor Geertsen as Kenosha County Board Chairman to lead us these next two years. Thank you. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Seeing none, nominations are closed. Please vote now. Only for one person, though. <laughs> smells like something's burning. Yeah. Does it smell like something's burning? Yeah.
Hey, how can I go back? Thank you. I will be reading the names and Amanda will be keeping track. Dave Geertsen. Monica Juhas. 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 Geertsen. Juhas. Geertsen. Juhas. Geertsen. 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 Juhas. Juhas. Geertsen. Geertsen. Juhas. Geertsen. Juhas. Juhas. We've 12 votes for Supervisor Juhas, nine votes for Supervisor Geertsen. Okay, Supervisor Juhas, congratulations being the, the new chairwoman. Okay, the next item of business is nomination of vice chairperson. Nominations from the floor. Just push it. Supervisor Carroll. Yes, uh, thank you, Chairman uh, Uhas. Uh, I would like to nominate uh, Mark Nordigan uh, for vice chair. Um, and I nominate Mark to be our next uh, Vice Chair Kenosha County of Supervisor. I've known Mark for several years and now after working with him for the past few years, I've come to appreciate him even more. Mark's background and experiences are excellent credentials to be our next Vice Chair. Some of his personal accomplishments are that uh, his personal life is very stable with being married to Corinne uh, and that they'll be celebrating their 35th wedding anniversary. Uh, the both of them have three outstanding grown children and um, uh, Talia's wedding is just a few weeks away in May. I'm um, sure he's looking forward to that. All three kids are on their own and making their own way in life and Mark currently is the trustee treasurer of the St. John's Catholic Church in Twin Lakes. Currently on his third term. Mark is a member of the Tri-Parish Council of St. Al's, St. John's, Holy Cross Parishes, and a former certified um, umpire, being very successful in both boys baseball and girls softball, and a volleyball referee. Currently, Mark and Corinne have taken up ballroom dancing as a way to stay active, 
Some of you here may have seen them dance at the WCA conference the last couple years, although he's taking a brief hiatus while he uh, tends to his shoulder issue now. Um, Mark has an outstanding uh, work uh, history as well, and he has worked in manufacturing for almost 46 years, uh, starting with pushing a broom and cleaning parts. He's moved in through tool making, and after 10 years as a tool maker, he moved into quality. And then in 1997 was a big year because he started his own manufacturing company. Mark has worked in every area of manufacturing and knows the importance a single person has to an organization and is currently in quality compliance and safety manager working on improvements throughout his organization. Mark has uh, served his community for many years starting way back in 1993 when he was appointed to the Park Commission for the town of Randall and just four years after moving into Randall. In 1994, Mark was asked to run for the Randall Town Board of Supervisors, ran and won, and he remained on the board until 2004. During those 10 years, um, Mark had helped to uh, repel an incorporation attempt uh, in Powers Lake. Um, he worked on the controversial Smart Growth Plan and worked very closely with residents, helping them navigate through small town government to get things done. In 2018, Mark wasn't done with his service because he decided to run for and won um, to be the Kenosha County Board of Supervisor for District 21. In 2022, Mark was appointed as Chair of Public Works Committee and worked directly with many current and former public works staff and found them to be get dedicated and professional, something we all should aspire to be. Mark improved the way committee meetings had traditionally been run. He removed the redundancy of reports, shortening the meeting times to have more time to discuss items in more depth and made them very much more productive. It was Mark who initially in 2018 brought up the need for the county golf courses to be self-sufficient, just as Brookside is, with no taxpayer monies being involved to run the golf courses. And Mark was very instrumental in achieving this goal in the 2023 budget. It was also Mark who brought up the all-terrain wheelchair for Pringle Nature Center, uh, where the, the county won't have to update the trails in Pringle so that those physical challenge, physically challenged individuals can enjoy Pringle. The all-terrain wheelchair handles Pringle's trails and more, and anyone can rent the all-terrain wheelchair and take it anywhere to another park, a beach, just to a family outing, again, at no cost to Kenosha County taxpayer. Mark's leadership on these in, in the Public Works Committee and the, the time that I've gotten to know him has been extraordinary. And I've come to realize, I hope that you come to realize what I already know, that Mark will do an excellent job as our next Vice Chair and ask for your support. Thank you, Supervisor Carroll. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Supervisor Grady? I would nominate Supervisor Gashke for Vice Chair. Supervisor Grady, would you like to speak on behalf of Supervisor Gashke? Um, I do not have a prepared statement at this time, but I would just go on to say that um, Daniel's had quite a good leadership role here. He's been involved in the uh, Kemper um, passing the torch from Supervisor Kubicki, and I don't have as much uh, prepared statements I'd like to have, um, but I'll just give you some brief background. Daniels represented the 7th District located in the center, city of Kenosha and on the county board since 2018. He served as both the chair and vice chair of the board's planning, development, and UW Extension Education Committee and the chair of the Land and Water Conservation Committee. He has also served on the board's executive committee, human services committee, legislative committee, Public Works and Facilities, Mental Health, Alcohol and Drug Committee, 
and the Racial and Ethnic Equity Commission and the Racine County Community Action Agency Board of Directors. Daniel and his wife, Emile, are adoptive and former foster parents who since 2010 have owned and operated a local small business, Harney Music School, formerly called Kinder Music with Emily, a music school offering small group music and movement classes for children and private music lessons of all ages. Daniel has been recently appointed as the new incoming executive director of the Kemper Center, Inc. starting in May. Daniel has also worked in education and mental health care as house manager of a community-based residential facility, that's a CBRF, as an academic advisor and instructor at Shepherds College, a post-secondary school for young adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities. He has also worked as a painting contractor and has earned both a Bachelor of Arts degree and a Master of Arts degree. Daniel strives to treat everyone with dignity and respect and will work to build a consensus over the next two years here on the county board to put our community first and help us all work together and move us forward. I would ask your consideration for Daniel for vice chair for these next two years. Thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Grady. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Hearing none, nominations are closed. For County Board Vice Chair, Supervisor Nordigan, Supervisor Gashke, Nordigan, Nordigan, Gashke, Gashke, Gashke. Gashke, Nordigan, Nordigan, Gashke, Gashke, Nordigan, Gashke, Gashke, Nordigan. Gashke, Nordigan, 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 Gashke. Supervisor Gashke, 11 votes, and Supervisor Nordigan, 10. Congratulations.
ready for me to call. Okay, be, before we proceed with the agenda, I would like to just make a, a brief statement. I'd like to thank the members of our community, the county board, elected officials, and county staff. I am deeply grateful for the opportunity to serve as the next chairman of the Kenosha County Board. This responsibility is one I hold with great reverence, and I assure you that I will approach it with the utmost dedication and integrity. Reflecting on the words of President Abraham Lincoln in his 1862 annual message to Congress, I am reminded of the enduring importance of our actions and words. In times of challenge and division, we must conduct ourselves with a sense of responsibility and moral clarity. Today our society faces its own set of challenges marked by partisanship, personal attacks, and political gridlock. Yet amidst these trials, there is hope. The recent election sent a clear message, a message of the desire for progress, effectiveness, and greater accountability. To our departing County Board Supervisors, I extend my sincere gratitude for your service. Serving in local government is a privilege, and your dedication to our community has made a meaningful impact. I wish you all the best on your future endeavors. To our incoming County Board of Supervisors and newly elected members, welcome. I'm here to listen to your ideas, to work together for the betterment of Kenosha County. To our county executive, I am eager to collaborate with you and the entire board to achieve positive outcomes for our county. Our constituents have entrusted us with the responsibility of governing, and we must work together to meet their expectations. Finally, to the residents of Kenosha County, I assure you that this board is committed to achieving great things, seeking answers, and serving as effective stewards of the resources that you have entrusted into us. Together we will build a brighter, more productive, and positive future for our community. Thank you, may God bless all of you, and God bless Kenosha County. Okay, Reggie. Yeah. County Executive Appointments, one, David Geertsen to serve on the Brookside Board of Trustees. Refer to the Human Services Committee. Communications from Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee, a resolution to approve the 2024 Activity Control License for Country Thunder East, LLC. Refer to Judiciary and Law Committee. Two, communication from Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee, a resolution to approve the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation Equipment Grant for the purchase of 10 rescue pumps, ACD CPR devices, and accessories. Refer to Judiciary and Law Committee and Finance Committees. Three, commun communication from the Public Works, Fa the Public Works Facilities Committee, a resolution for a intergovernmental agreement on transfer of three parcels by KC and by Kenosha County and the city for Hillside Hardware at 4615 52nd Street. Refer to Public Works and Finance and Administration Committees. Communication from the Public Works and Facilities Committee, a resolution for an MOU between Kenosha County and Camp and Center Lakes Rehab District relating to County Trunk Highway C water control structures. Refer to Public Works Facilities and Finance Administration Committees. Communication from Andy M. Bueller regarding future items scheduled for the Planning, Development, and Extension Education Committee. Receive, Receive to file. Communication from Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee, a resolution to approve the probationary cabaret license, Honey Dippers, 34500 Geneva Road, New Munster, 53152. Refer, refer to Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee. Communication from Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee, an intergovernmental agreement to provide water patrol enforcement services to Camp and Center Lake Rehabilitation District. Refer to Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee. 
communication from judiciary and law enforcement, an intergovernmental agreement to provide water patrol enforcement services to Silver Lake Management District. Refer to Judiciary and Law Enforcement Committee. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, Motion to adjourn by Supervisor Decker. Second. Second by Supervisor Morrissey. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. Have a good evening.